What up, what up, what up? You tuned in to the Jose Morales Podcast, where we talk sports, business, and everything in between. I am your host, Jose Morales, and we're at my boxing academy. Joining me in the ring today is the face of the gym. When you walk in, she's the tallest person right to your right, <laughs> Kelly Chavez. What's up? How do you feel being on your first podcast? It feels kind of weird. Why? Um, because I feel like I'm having like a just a normal conversation, but there's all this technology around me. Yeah, so she said weird. it feels like she's in her brother's John's room. Oh yeah, high tech room. Yeah, so those that, screens. that don't know, her brother's like a big old gamer. So you walk into his room, he's got like five screens everywhere, <laughs> got microphones. He's he's probably the only guy to be playing an Xbox and a PlayStation at the same time. Hey, I moved out the next day. There was like five TVs in my old room. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so. Those that come to the gym probably already know Kelly. Kelly is uh, probably the biggest, one of the biggest pieces to the gym running oh. successfully. Because, yes, us, the trainers, and everything we do, but without Kelly, uh, the bills wouldn't be getting paid, and Kelly's a big role to it. So what we're going to talk about today is really about um, our relationship, how we met, our families. Uh, her part in the gym, her future, her personal life, her goals, and pretty much get to know Kelly because I don't think that we talk about Kelly too much. <laughs> and that's why I was like, I think it's very important to talk about Kelly because you are important. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I that's why I was like, let's bring Kelly on. First, uh, I'm going to give you guys a background on Kelly. Kelly's actually my cousin's daughter. So uh kelly's grandpa and my mom are brother and sister true mexican tree yeah it's crazy yeah it is it's all it's all over the place so that's how uh both kelly and i are connected i actually used to always go at their house when i was little uh kelly they have a lot of videos of me acting a fool when i was nah, a little kid he cannot stand still still true to this day yeah <laughs> add all over the place so that's our history as far as like family that's how we're connected kelly had a uh, interesting childhood as far as you were overweight for a long time, right? It was it was weird because it went from living the absolute perfect life to being bullied and almost falling into depression because I was big. Um, so I mean, like as a kid, I was I was uh, the only grandchild, the only niece, like the only niece from the. I guess you could say immediate family. Like, yeah, yeah. so I was very spoiled. I got whatever I wanted. Yeah, I, do remember that. I was, I was, uh, I had an amazing like childhood. little childhood. Yeah. yeah. Um, the bullying started when I was, uh, I don't know if I start getting into it. Of course you tell us whatever you want. <laughs> the bullying started when I was, it was like a shock because we so had, when did you, when did you, be, cause I remember to me, I was always happy. Yeah, you were always happy. <laughs> so I, I didn't know this. I mean, I was part of her family. So, I, I mean, I wasn't there all the time and talked to her about it. But I didn't. I never knew you were bullied. Yeah. Ever. I didn't find this out until recently. Yeah. I mean, probably like two, three years ago at the gym, she told me she was being bullied. <laughs> so when did the bullying start? Because so that's what I don't know. Yeah, it started like around fifth grade. Um, So it was weird because I was so used to like all that love. Like that's all I got. Like. People always loved me. People always liked me. I've never been un unliked in a sense. So it kind of was like a slap in reality. Like, this is the world. Not everything's perfect at the age of 11. Um, so I remember, or 10, I remember we had to switch schools. And this is weird why I wanted to switch schools, but I'm oddly very, I was always very mature. So I remember moving houses, and I knew that if I went to a different school it'd be easier on my parents as far as transportation and yeah. like i never had a sense of like bad people so i was like oh i'm gonna go to this new school and it's gonna be great like all these like fun ideas well i got there and then that's when the bullying started it was not anything i expected because you were overweight so yeah. you were like obese yeah were, i was uh, were you chunky or were you obese no i was in the category of obese like yeah. uh, if people because i remember you being chunky but to me, you didn't seem obese. I thought you were just chunky. You yeah. Know what I mean? <laughs> no, um, I was, and and women will get this a little bit more than men, but I was a size twenty in women, in women, not in kids, in women at the age of eleven. Damn. So, now and and the to put it in perspective, the smallest size is zero. So I was at oh, twenty. Shit. Um, 
So that's kind of when it just, uh, I think just reality hit me and I started, at, it was just something out of the blue because that was, this was completely new to me. I always, like I said, I've always been loved. I have an amazing family and I've been super supportive and everything. But then I go to school and suddenly people start making, I, at that point I knew I was overweight, but I didn't really know what it was. Like, you know how like a kid doesn't really judge, it's, it's very like innocence. Like you don't really judge people by the, what they look like when you're a child. You're kind of yeah. just a child and you go based off of personalities. So I went from going based off the personalities of people judging me because of how I looked. And so that was really like new to me. I was like, I'm fat. Like I knew I was not, I didn't look like my mom. Keep in mind, I was like five feet, hundred pounds, skinny waist. Like she's always been, I knew I didn't look like that, but I didn't know what I was looking like was wrong in the society. So, um, that affected it, you a lot emotionally. Yeah, it kind of just like threw me off, like 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 you're in like this path, and then they just throw you into like a new, like horrific path. That's crazy. I mean, think about for me thinking about it now because I remember you at that time, and I don't remember you yeah, being like that. It was That's weird because the reason I want to say I didn't feel I didn't fall into depression is because I have such a supportive family and like a backbone. Like I, if I didn't have them, I would have fallen into depression because I do remember. So I, it was to the point where I'd come home crying every single day. And my, uh, my mom and my dad are all, both very supportive, but my mom, I remember the most because she is the type of mom where she would go to the school and like demand things to change like she would just go over there and she'd be like what is like what's going on like you guys are like you know i, I oh my bad i want my daughter to you know what what is this how are you not doing anything about it and i remember that and having that support um kept me strong because i do remember looking in the mirror and being like feeling trapped and for the first time in my life because my whole life i've been very catholic and like i uh, believe in god i still am um I would, but I was to the point where I was an altar server. So I was like in church every weekend. And, um, at that point I was even questioning God, like, why would God do to me, do me like this? Like I'm looking in the mirror and I'm trapped and why am I fat? Like, why can't I, why couldn't I just be born skinny? So I do remember looking at myself and thinking that, and then that's like, you think about that and you're like, oh my God, like if I didn't have that support, like I think about it now, like these kids who don't have that support at home, like you go to school and you feel like shit and yeah. then you go home and you feel like shit. Like I can kind of see why, you know, kids commit suicide or, you know, they go anorexic or like all these diseases because I was lucky enough to have a, like a family who's supportive, yeah. but not everybody has that. And that's why I didn't show it because when I was with my family, it was comfortable. I was happy. Yeah. But the minute... He went to school. Went to school is when it would be bad. Or, and then they got into my head. So I remember I'd go shopping with my mom as a young girl. You, That's what you want to do. You want to go shopping. We all love shopping. I'd go shopping. I'd come out crying because this didn't fit because this didn't look right. I remember one time um, my mom's sister came from Mexico, uh, mi tia Naiz, and we went out to take pictures. And I came out crying from the pictures because I looked so fat in that picture. And it was like... When you think back, you're like, well, what picture did you want? <laughs> like, you're going to yeah. look how you look, you know? But I remember I was crying because I looked so fat in that picture. And I think it was a, I think it was very hard for my mom to help me because she didn't really know how to help me. But she, she always did her best. And so she always pushed me to do better. But she did, you know, t try, she tried to teach me. You, I can't change it for you. Like you have to think about if you are not happy, if you're happy over with that's I mean, yes, I'm worried about your health and stuff, but that's fine. Like it doesn't matter what you look like, but if you're not happy, you need to do, you need to change something. Like if that's not, who, if you're gonna not going to be happy like that, because there's people who are in a like different sizes, shapes, and they're happy the way they yeah. are. Yeah. I just wasn't happy. And then you started losing weight because I remember you, you were skating, right? You remember you were, I remember your mom would take you to go skate. Yeah, that was a little bit when I was younger. Um, so my, like I said, my mom was very supportive. Yeah. And then Kelly's mom is like full on organic everything. You know what I mean? Like I used to <laughs> yeah. hate. Fun fact: when I would go over there, I used to hate going over there, and I would have to drink organic milk for my cereal. <laughs> I don't and know it why. Was a healthy cereal. It yeah. Was never and no flakes. sugar, no nothing. And I remember I'd be like. What kind of shit is this? <laughs> like, Kelly, you live here? How the hell do you live in this house? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so. it was it was like that. And, uh, and a fun fact is 
Um, I'll get to how I like got so disciplined to actually want to start changing. But uh, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Uh, my mom was so supportive that when I was ready, I was 11 and a half. And um, we went to, I was like, mom, I want to start doing something. So she's like, well, I can't have you join a gym until you're 12. That's the age. Like all the gyms, like California Family Fitness and yeah. stuff like that. And so she went down to a gym and she said, yeah, yeah, she's 12. And she like put my birthday wrong and lied just so I, just so I could get into the gym. And I just think back and I laugh. I'm like, mom, she just lied to the gym yeah. <laughs> and said I was 12. I mean, I was basically 12. I needed to wait a couple months, but. She was like, yeah, her birthday's in April. Yeah, she, you <laughs> fried. No, I'm playing. <laughs> and uh, so, and she went to the gym with me and stuff like that. And I, that's how kind of how I got into fitness. But um, what really made me change is I started seeing things about myself then as a child that I was like, this isn't how I want to be. Like, for example, when I was bullied, and I'm totally embarrassed of this, but I was, when I was bullied, I was called... I was called all these names, uh, Oompa Loompa. And then I remember we went to this, um, we were reading this book in English and there was a story called Earthquake Terror. So the minute I walked on the bus, all the guys or, or the kids were like, Earthquake Terror and like the bus was moving. So all that stuff, like it really put me like in a dark place at school. So I remember just trying to defend myself and try to get out of that situation. So there was a girl who was a little chunkier than I was. And I called her out and like, kind of like, why are you calling me fat when she's fatter in a sense? And I think back at that and I'm so embarrassed, but I feel like it's important to share because I think those are like normal feelings. Like you don't want to be dragged down alone. Like you want to drag someone with you or you want to yeah, take the is. attention away from you. So I, so that's something I learned. I was like, I don't want to be that person yeah, to drag and, people down with me. And it's something that that's how it is in, in life, even yeah. as an adult. When somebody, you can tell people that are unhappy. Yeah. Because all the unhappy people are trying to make everybody else's life unhappy, unhappy. too. Or kind or of miserable. like, if you think about it, like this whole being stuck inside the house coronavirus thing, I think people feel better because they know that they're not the only ones stuck inside the house. I feel like it's just like a, like yeah. a natural everybody's doing yeah it pretty much. yeah so i saw that in myself and i was like yeah i definitely don't want to be that person that drags down people with them but i i did i was in a very dark place and and i was trying to find an out i didn't care who mm -hmm. went down with me i just wanted out and so um i didn't want to be like that and then so i and then i the other thing that i was doing that was very negative is i was pointing fingers uh, it was, it was me. I had to make the change, but I was pointing fingers at everybody. Everybody had, it was everybody's fault that I was fat. It was God's fault that I was fat. It was my parents' fault that I was fat because they gave me the jeans. It was, uh, my dad sneaking snacks into his truck and me finding them and eating them. Like it was everyone's fault except my own. So yeah. what opened my eyes there is I went to a, I went to the pediatrician and she told me, she's like, you're overweight. And your family has a history of diabetes and you're in risk of getting diabetes. You need to change that. And that's when I started saying, oh, like, I'm, uh, I, I want to eat better, but, you know, my dad sneaks uh, stuff into his truck and then I get, or they, he, it's hard for me to, and then she's like, slap, like, slap me into reality. She's like, no, you are 12 years old. You know exactly what you pick up and you put it in your mouth. You do not need to put your fingers at your mom or dad. You Are the one have that decision. Mouth. Yeah, you have that decision. You have that control. No one else does. I remember I came out of that doctor so mad. I was crying. I was so angry. But it's because it's like. She told you the truth. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. And she told me the truth. And so that's actually. I have her to think because I think that's the one thing. Like, I think a lot of things led up to it. But that's the like the, the switch. That, yeah. The switch. I'm like, oh, you know what? It, it, isn't. it right. is my control. And then my mom that day, she started talking to me. She was like, look, if you're not happy, you know, uh, we have that tradition of the quinceanera. She's like, think about how you're going to feel that day. She's yeah. like, "I'm me and your dad can spend all the money on the party, on everything you want. But are you going to be happy in your dress? Like, you know, yeah. if you're if you're going to be happy, that's fine. But if you're not, you, you got to make a change. And that's when I made a change. And I started, um, I never did. And, and I always tell this to people because a lot of people, especially nowadays, they go into these crazy diets to lose weight super fast. But you gain it right back. It took me two years to go from a size 20 to a size zero. Actually went to a size zero. 
And it took me two years, and it was a slow process, but there was progress, and it was healthy, and I didn't gain it all back. Yeah, and it took time. Yeah. yeah. And and I, and I, I learned. Yeah, I remember. Because, oh, I was the main guy at the uh, oh, yeah. Quinceañera. <laughs> I was a uh, Chambelando Nord was me. <laughs> Yay. Anyways, uh, when I went to it, during that time, I didn't, I didn't really see you too much. And I remember last time I saw you, you were chunky, and then I saw you again, and you were, like, skinny. I was like, what the fuck happened to the other half of Kelly? What's yeah. the other half of Kelly? Where is that at? Yeah. But, yeah, I do I, re, I do remember that part. Um, you actually, after that, uh, you got into Zumba, no? Yeah. How, when did you get into Zumba? I got into Zumba, like, a couple months before my quinceanera. So, oh, so during that time is when you got into Zumba. Mm -hmm. I was, oh. um, well, I started going to classes. I was uh, never a... So I always recommend if somebody's like struggling with weight and stuff, I always try classes, and that's one of the reasons why I love the gym, because I I'm not a I'm not a fitness person. I mean I know it's healthy for me and I love how I feel after, but getting there is just so hard. It's hard. Yeah. So I was motivated to go to classes before Zumba. It was boot camp, cycling, anything that was fun in an environment, but I did not want to sit there on the treadmill and like run like it's just yeah. not my thing and it was so boring so once i started doing classes that's actually when i started seeing more progress because i was being pushed and yeah. i was not just doing the treadmill or just doing this thing like i was actually being pushed and so then i got introduced into zumba and then later on i got recruited to teach zumba and so i went and got my license at 16 and i started and i've been teaching so I, zumba after so, that so so like about a year later of doing Zumba, you got recruited to become a, an instructor. Yeah, uh, um, this um, friend's mom was opening up this like herbal life location, and she was like, "I think you should, uh, you should come teach for me." And I said, "Well, I don't know what I gotta do. I think I have to get a license." And I actually talked to my Zumba instructor, and she's like, she was super supportive, which is rare. something that yeah, it's kind of rare to find. And I remember talking to her, and I said, "Oh, she wants me to teach," and she was so supportive. And I said, oh, "I don't really have any songs right now." She's like, Oh no, just use what you want. Let me know if you know, uh, you like. I asked her, "Is it okay if I use your songs?" Yeah, if you need the CD, let me know. And she was just always like super supportive, and that's something I thank her too because I don't think I could have started off Sumba that strong without her support. Because yeah. I at the beginning I was using all her songs. I didn't, so it was basically her class in a different location. Yeah, it makes a sense. different instructor. Damn. And then uh, you got into Zumba, and then you also graduated, and you went to you went straight to Sac State, huh? Yeah. Um, you didn't go to community at all? No. Um, Why did you do that? Like, so, what made you do that? Why? Not that you did it wrong or nothing, but I'm curious why you chose to go straight to a four-year. Um, because I knew my I knew to me school was important, and I at the time my mentality changed during school, but at the time it was something I had to do. It wasn't something I really wanted to do. And I knew myself, so I knew that if I invested a lot of money into it, I wasn't going to quit. But if I just went to community college, I felt like it was going to be easier for me to quit. I didn't yeah. want to give myself that opportunity to quit. Because okay. I knew it wasn't going to be my favorite thing. I mean, I, a lot, especially you see everybody graduating high school, the kids are partying. Like, yeah. I knew I wasn't, by the way, I couldn't even party because I'm Mexican. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Your parents got you on lockdown. Uh-huh. No matter if you're 18 or not. <laughs> yeah, which was which is a good thing. And by the way, I actually tested Kelly a lot of times. One oh, yeah. time, I tell you guys a story. <laughs> she was at Target, walking into Target, and I was outside. I was driving by, so she's right in the front, in front of Target, right. And she's walking in with her girl, like one of her friends, and I saw it was Kelly. I rolled my window down, and I think she was wearing yellow or something. I don't remember, but I was like, "Hey, Blue. hey." Yeah, it was blue, huh? I was like, hey, you, you in the blue. What's up, little mama? You in the blue. And she <laughs> she did not look back. She kept walking, walking, walking. I'm like, little mama in the blue. And she just kept ignoring me. And then I'm like, all right, Kelly. And then she turned around. I'm like, you passed. <laughs> I'm like, I was testing you, seeing if you was uh, if you was easy to get. And she's like, you scared the shit out of me. I'm yeah. like, good, good. Uh, so then after that, that, you went to Sac State. You graduated. One thing. I heard people tell you, because during that time before you were at Sac State, I mean, while you were at Sac State, you were already, you were, you were at the bank, right? Mm -hmm. I was you, working at Bank of America. The bank, and then before that, John's Incredible? No, before that, I was working as a sales uh, salesperson and at Ann Taylor. Ann Taylor. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then? And then John's Incredible Pizza okay. before that. 
And then, uh, so you were at Bank of America, you came here, and I remember when you were here, um, there was, I mean, I, I know, I heard people tell you, like, you know, what are you going to do after you graduate? What are you going to do after you graduate? You had all these, which is obvious. I mean, you're going to graduate. People are most likely to move on to their career. Uh, why are you, why did you decide to stay here? What about the gym? Why did you, because I know people are like, what are you doing there still? Yeah, um... I did get a lot of that, a lot of that. And a lot of people looking at me like, so you went to college and you're just going to stay here? Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of reasons why I stayed here. Um, one of the things I realized it, at Sac State was um, while I was going to school and working at the bank, the bank was not, I mean, the bank was amazing. It had amazing benefits, like everything you could ask for. And I was part time. So if, I can only imagine. Yeah. yeah. So I can imagine full time. Um, but I was miserable because I was getting yelled at by the customers every day and not yeah. necessarily my fault. It's just, they're mad. They wait in line for too long. They're mad because they don't have money in their account, whatever. They're mad and they're mad at me and they're taking it out on me. So taking that, taking it home and like, I was happy. I don't have any kids or any like husband or anything. So it's like, so I'm not really taking it out on people, but I was taking that home. I was taking that to school, yeah. like that anger. And it, yeah, it definitely brings you. I was like, I don't want to be miserable. I said, I don't care what I do. I said, I will, whatever I decide, whatever place I go, I just want to make sure I'm happy there. Mm -hmm. And I'll just push myself to do better and invest money or find a way. Like if that job doesn't pay as much, I need to find a way to make money, like multiple in income streams. Like, but I do not want to go to a day job where I'm just like, oh, yeah, you hate work. Yeah. That's so, one thing I, I, I've noticed about people when they go to, I had a friend that majored in economics, got a job in downtown, great paying job. And he hated it because it was all numbers. He's all, yeah. and he said everyone in his office was like zero personality. Like, yeah. he's like, you couldn't have no fun. It was just boring. He's like, I hated it. it and he actually quit it. It and, is a very boring, like, okay. So the economics, me learning it, I love it because I love numbers and I love like the history of it and yeah. I like the like not knowing what's gonna happen and like nobody really can predict the economy. Like it's just it's very hard. You can go based off of history and stuff, but you can't really predict it. Um, so I like all that, but it is a very like most of the professors are like really boring because yeah. like, or like just the material is not that fun. So I can imagine going to a job and because um, my senior class is pretty much kind of like in a like a field you're doing like a whole bunch of data and a bunch of formulas i can see how that being day to day is just not um very fun but it helped me prepare for my finances and my yeah it's you know, good to know and it i think it it's also connected with business so it actually ended up working out because i always so i always wanted to like uh I have a something I have something for customer service for some reason and I always wanted to do something in that and I always wanted to do something with business but I didn't want to open up my own business and then I at the same time you start learning when you're in the workplace that these companies don't care about you you're just like another number so I also didn't want to put all my time and effort time and something. effort into a company that's gonna be like oh we're laying off people bye bye you know yeah. so when I came here it was like the perfect it like came out of the sky. It was so perfect. It was um, somebody I grew up with, which at the beginning I was hesitant because sometimes when you work with family, it ends up being bad. So, mm -hmm. but then I saw Jose was very motivating and he's very, um, always tries to do better and he's always worrying and he cares. Like he legit cares about his, like his uh, employees. We're not employees, we're his family. So I'm his family, but everyone else at the gym is his family. And that to me was already like okay i like if i'm gonna put my 100 percent in something and he's gonna gain from it then i'm gonna be happy not some big corporate that's gonna yeah. kick, you know and then on top of that all these members like they're all like super amazing like everyone here at the gym like they're so nice they're so knowledgeable like you talk to them you could learn so much yeah so it's like that's a big part like that's yeah. what changed my life but yeah, it's true. We have amazing members here. Yeah, so it's just like it was <clears throat> it was a no-brainer. I mean, yeah, I had um a couple like a couple potential job offers that had like some fed like federal pay or whatever, but I don't what am I going to do leave something I love to go be miserable mm -hmm. and and so it's just not 
it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me i want to be happy that's what i want to be i don't want to go like i said go to a day job and just be like oh great gotta go to work yeah and so and the, I think the biggest thing, too, is it's very important to surround yourself because I feel like what you surround yourself with is what you end up being. So if you surround yourself with very negative people, you're going to start becoming a little negative. Yeah. And you rub off. Yeah. And so I'm surrounded by a positive, loud Jose, positive yelling in my ear, all this positivity. I'm a way more positive person than I was five years ago. I mean, I've never been super negative, but I'm always looking at how to grow what to do next like yeah i didn't do that before i think that if i would have graduated not ever found this place went to a five uh, eight to five job i would have just been comfortable i wouldn't have been trying to grow trying to and that's true that's i I I mean that's what happened similar to me when i was at the dealer i was comfortable yeah i had a good job i was comfortable until i got until somebody woke me up and then but it's very true as far as who you're around and the way they motivate you and the way they push you yeah um one thing i wanted to bring up a lot of people uh don't understand how important or how much power kelly i I give to kelly and people think i'm lying when i tell them this that's true that's something i do thank you for and and uh i i tell kelly kelly you can do whatever you want for real like as far as if you want to charge somebody zero dollars, then you charge them zero dollars. You're the boss. If you want to charge them a thousand dollars, you charge them a thousand dollars. Yeah. Whatever you want to do, I back you up one hundred percent. And the reason why I'm like that is because when I was at the dealership, I hated, hated with the passion when I was doing something for a customer and then they go cry to the manager and then the manager comes and bypasses me like I don't even exist. I was like, well, what the fuck's the point of me being here then? Yeah. If, if, you know what I mean? So I, that's what kind of put me on exactly how I wanted to be with everyone on my on my team. You know, I, I give Kelly all the power to do whatever she wants to do. Uh, and I told her, these are the requirements. This is what I expect. As long as we're doing that, we're good. We're, and then you do what you want to do. Yeah, that is, that is actually another reason why I love it here. Um, you're not being micromanaged. You're not, you know... You sit, we sit down and we have our meetings about what we could do better, what we can, you know, uh, what we did great, but we don't sit here and be like, well, you should have done this or you should do it. Like, it's not negative and it's not, I want you to, yeah. you know, and, and, or like that you said, customer cries and, and, and you go above me. And so it, it is, he does, when he says, give me all the power, he does give me all the power. And at the beginning when he said he's going to give me all the power, I was, I was like, okay. But I've been with those managers before. I'm like, okay. But um, he gave me all the power. And to this day, he's kept that word. And I really, really do appreciate that because it is it is hard. It is hard when you there's rules and policies and, you know, you, you want to be fair to everybody else, not just thinking about that one person. It's you got to be fair to everybody. And then they go to the manager, and, like at the bank, they go to the manager and they cry. And then the bank goes, oh, yeah, I'll break the rule. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, under my can, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm yeah, so get I, I later. just, I think for people to understand that too, they had they had to have lived that, and a lot yeah. of people didn't live that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I always feel if you're gonna have if you're gonna be successful and have a successful business, everyone just got to play the role and you do your part, and then that's always gonna go good. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to go really uh, over here try to tell somebody how to do their job. If they're fucking up the job, you talk to them, and then you know how long you been here now. Four years. Four years. So almost five. So out of these four, almost five years, I'm very proud and happy to say we've never been in an argument. Oh yeah. Never been in an argument, and then that's between us and David and all of us. We've yeah, that's never all of us. had an argument, and I'm dead serious. I'm not lying about this. Yeah. We never had an argument. We had disagreements, but our disagreements never became arguments. We yeah. would talk about it, literally talk about it. Like, wait, we should do this. We should do that, and boom. But we're never oh, fuck you, da, 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 yeah. or like yell at each other or nothing. Disrespected each other, which I'm amazing. It makes me amazingly proud to say that because that's huge. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things that you've taught me, at least, and I'm uh, thinking everybody, it's um, communication. 
is yeah. key to everything. To I was going to bring that up next. Good yeah. Good point, Kelly. To, no, <laughs> <laughs> it is to your employees, to your superiors, to your kids, to, to your, your wife, s- to everybody. Yeah, to everybody. Because, and I feel like I learned that here. And it just takes you so far. far. Like, it you does. think the littlest thing, like, it just, it's, all you got to do is say it. Because you, that, that person, like, Jose could be like, um, I don't know. He could he could be saying a certain word that makes me feel like really belittled, and he doesn't know that. That's just a Damn. word that he has a habit of. And then and then if I don't say anything, then it's gonna turn into yeah. You know? And that's something a so, lot of people have a hard time with. They they see something and it bugs them, and they never say nothing. Yeah. And they hold it in, they hold it in, they hold it in, and then one day they explode, boom. And then yeah. that that explosion turns into fist fights into something a lot bigger than it could have been. Yep. And that is a big thing. I tell and that's one of the biggest things we ask even from our members, from yep. everybody. Just We're like just communicate. If you really can't afford it, just ask. Just tell us. Be honest. If you really can't uh if that class or something doesn't work or if a trainer bugs you or us or anything, just tell us and we'll fix it. But if you never communicate to us or you never tell us nothing uh, how can we ever fix whatever it is that you're asking us? And that's something that we are pretty goddamn good at. Yeah. Is communicating with each other like, hey, Kelly, quit doing this. Hey, quit doing this. Yeah. And I think that's the secret, communication. Yeah. Good it point. definitely is. And it and when you take that and you apply it to everything else in your life, it helps you. Like, mm-hmm. I've applied it everywhere with my family, with um, with my boyfriend, with everything. Like, Speaking of boyfriend, <laughs> where, where'd you meet this guy? At the gym. Yeah, she met him here. This guy, this guy, <laughs> by the way, fucking Brandon. He, uh, I, I, I knew he was up to something because class was over and he's still up front, act like he's asking for memberships, uh, membership <laughs> questions. I'm like, I know your membership questions ain't lasting no three hours, B. Come on, nah. But uh, yeah, they met here. Uh, it was he, funny because I thought so. Fun fact about my boyfriend: he's not a. He's not a super talkative person, but he was super talkative to me. But I didn't. Really, <laughs> but I didn't see that. Motive, baby, motive. <laughs> I, I didn't. See, I didn't see that because, you know, I talked to him and then he came into this class and I was doing my thing up front. And then when he was done, he would talk to me again. So I thought that he was socializing with everybody at the gym. Nah, and then everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody started telling me all these, uh, like. Um, Marissa, she was like, uh, Kelly, I think that guy has some like a thing for you. And then even A B was telling me, like, she was like winking at me. She he has a, another fun fact, he has really big eyelashes, so she'd be you guys can't see it, but she'd be like uh. batting her eyelashes to to give me a sign that he got here. And I was like, Oh my gosh, you guys are tripping. And even Bobby one oh, yeah. day I was um Oh yeah, I remember that. I was up front and then he comes up to me and he goes, Hey Kelly, come here and I go, What? He's like is that is that, you got a boyfriend? Is that your boyfriend? And I go, no. He's like, well, he about to be. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Bobby did say that. I was like, <laughs> okay. Fucking Bobby. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny though because I remember, in a sense, I was kind of in denial that I I did have a thing for him, but I was in denial because I had. Um, Kelly had said, "I never want to date <laughs> a military man ever again." She said this like ten times, and uh, Brandon That's is you say in the never. Air Force. And Brandon's in there for so that was false. That is not true. She, but that she, that that was part of the reason. But the biggest reason was I had past relationships in school, and well, I was in in college, and college and work was a lot already. And to have somebody in a relationship, it is work. It's work. Yeah, hell yeah. You gotta give your you gotta give your person time. You gotta give you know you have to <clears throat> find time for each other. Otherwise, you guys are gonna fall apart. Um, so I was also, like, and a lot of the guys that I had dated in the past weren't very mature. So they were very like, oh, you never have time. Like, I felt kind of like I was dating a girl. Or, no, you never have time or, oh, no. this or, or, um, or things like that. And, and I was like, you know what? I just don't like, I get in arguments and I couldn't focus on my homework. So I was like, I, I can't do this. I'm not going to do this while I'm in school. I need to focus on school and yeah. I need to focus on work. And so then Brandon came along and I was like, well, I'm about to graduate in May. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. No, but Brandon is actually a really, really, really good dude. Yeah. Um uh yeah, it took me a while to like get full, but I love I I like the guy a lot. I like B a lot. He's very 
educated, got a good heart, got a good head on his shoulder. <clears throat> yeah. And, In your defense, you a, a fun fact about Jose is he was like an older brother to me. So it was easier for me to introduce a, a guy to my dad than it was to Jose. But I no. kind of had no choice. Kelly used to hide from me. I caught her one time in the club. I called <laughs> Kelly in the club one time. I I bobbed and weaved, guys. And I didn't even know what tucked. that was. And I went over there and I grabbed her ass. I'm like, what the hell are you doing here? Get your ass home. I was like, wait, I'm 18. What are you talking about? Uh, Yeah. So, and uh, by the way, too, uh, those that do not know, Kelly's probably got a shit ton of uh, fucking nicknames. <laughs> one of them. I'm going to bring this up. One of oh, her nicknames. No. I don't know. If, I don't even know if Ricky knows this. We called her Repo. And the, story the reason why fake, we guys. called her Repo, check this out. There's this guy that had that old money to the gym. It's a lie. He had a balance. I don't even remember what the balance <laughs> was. Probably wasn't a lot. Fucking Kelly pulls up to his house. No, no his job. I don't. No, pulls up to his uh, his work. It was a customer service job. I was there to buy a product. Yeah, he went to his work <laughs> to get the money. No. Like, goddamn, <laughs> that's repo right there. Shit, it's like getting your card repoed. The real story is that I just had gone to get the product and yeah. that um and he's like, Oh, I owe you money. I said, No, 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 wait to go to the gym and he insisted on giving me the money. But they turned it into a whole big thing. That's funny. Oh yeah, that's hilarious. So what's your goal, Kelly, from here on out? What are you gonna do? What's your what's what, what's Kelly in five years, ten years? Where where can well what's my, your plan with Kelly? My biggest goal is probably um with the, with the gym, I would say continue growing as a team and just continue putting my 100% in and um, take it day by day, week by week, month by month, and just uh, continue growing it. Um, and that's job-wise. I think as a person, I think continue growing as well uh, in everything, in my relationship, with my family, um, with my personal life, with, um, with my finances, like just grow and you know, um, realize that it's okay to change things as you go too. Cause uh, that's actually something that me and Brandon were talking about yesterday is that we don't, it's okay to change goals. It's okay to change directions. Like just because you said you were going to be a veterinarian when you were five does not mean you have to be a veterinarian when you're, you yeah, know, it's so true. Yeah, it's not wrong with that. You just, you're very true. You grow, you adjust and you change and just to keep moving forward. That's pretty much it. Yep. That's cool. I like yeah. that. I like that a lot. Uh, um, one thing I'm, I was thinking about it. One thing I like about your relationship with Brandon, I told Oli this. I love how you guys motivate each other. So yeah. I thought I'd bring that up. I like how you guys are like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and you guys hold each other accountable. That is exactly what I think is a recipe for a good relationship. I think too many nowadays where it's one way, where it's one person's, yeah. you're chasing one person's happiness, happiness, but the other person is not worrying about the other person and they're not trying to make each other better. Yeah. One thing I tell my warriors is, uh, these are the conversations I have with my boxers. I tell them, when you're going to find your girl or your guy, because it's going to be a day in time, you got to make sure you guys balance each other out. So if they're constantly sitting there, like you said, with your past boyfriends, oh, you don't have enough time for me. Oh, you don't have enough this for me. That means they ain't doing shit. They're depending on you. You know what yeah. I mean? They, no one, no one should be dependent on you. They, sh they shouldn't have to wait for you to come home. Yeah, it should be... It, it be, it's, it's genuine. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're doing their own shit already. Yeah. They, you know, it, and that's actually one of the things that Brandon has that we i feel like we've grown together and it's changed me and how i look at relationships too because there's a big communication there that i didn't have in the yeah. past there's a big support system there like i want to do this and then we sit there and we talk about it and we analyze it and we look at the benefits and we look at the downside and but we i am not afraid to be like oh shit if i say this it's gonna be an argument it's like oh no this is yeah, gonna be a, a conversation yeah and we're gonna good. talk about it and um <clears throat> it'll be uh so I think that's one of the biggest things there is and being your own person and you support each other as your own person. Like um, he knows that I'm a very like family person. He knows that uh, my job is very important to me so, and he supports that. So and so I think that's important to him to or when you go with your friends like he's like, oh, like, you're 
go or you got to leave or, you know, it's like he's okay you gotta do that okay that's cool or like in, like i said family is a big thing for me so he, every before this quarantine every sunday we would go out my dad would cook something we'd go over there i always wanted to find somebody who would support me as far as family yeah because that is a big factor in my life and i never wanted to sit here and choose between somebody i loved and my, my family, family. Yep. yep that and is good so i'm and that's one of the things but again it's communication because if i had never told him my family is so important to me he may not have known that yep so that is true. Um, all right. I'm going to start asking you some random questions. Uh -oh. You ready? Yep. It has nothing to do with anything, just <laughs> to make it fun. First one, if, you have, if you're talking to a girl, a little girl, obese, 12-year-old obese girl, struggling with depression and bullying, what would be your tip to her? What would you tell her? Um, you got this, um, you know. It's hard to know at that moment, but you are your own person and you can't let these people control your emotions and your and your life. Don't let somebody take over your life. You know, if, if there's something if they're bullying you, don't let that affect you. If you're, for example, if I was comfortable with my weight, it shouldn't have affected me. I, I should have just, you know, tried. To, yeah, OK, so they're saying that. Yeah. Keep in mind that they're saying that because they have no life or a reason or they're yeah. miserable or they're dragging don't you let down. Affect, don't let yeah. negative people affect you. Yeah. Cool. And um, if there is something that you, you know, it hurts, like it hurts, then maybe there's something you got to change. So look at that and look how you're going to change <clears> it and look towards the future. So, for example, in my case, I had to lose weight. Look towards that. In two years, I'm going to be this skinny and I'm going to look this good and focus on that. Focus on that positive. And you will get there. And you just got to. Yeah. Change their mentality and, and push forward. Cool. And don't let people drag you down. I like that. Next one. First thing that comes to your mind. Oh, don't think about it too much. Real quick on that thing. Also, I am on um, Instagram and I have my phone number. So if any girls are hearing this and they do want to talk to somebody who's been there, done that, or feel no support system, I don't want them to be hesitant. I, I don't care if I don't know you. I don't care if I've never seen you in my life. I don't care if you're my sister. Call me. Text me. Reach out to me. I will be there because cool. I've been there and sometimes it's nice to talk to somebody who's been there yep it is it's, it is true first thing that pops up in your head don't or think about it too much uh -oh. favorite restaurant in sack first one first one you're thinking that's too much already it's just I right away I don't have an in and out in and out <laughs> they're everywhere though that's not just sack alright alright uh, that's, that's true. good you that's said good sack. that's good uh, something about you not a lot of people don't know tell me something a lot of people don't know about Kelly I am four ten and a half. Man, people can see that. <laughs> yeah, that's hey, easy. they don't know that I'm in a half, okay? That half is very important to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anything you want to add before we end it? Anything you want to say? Anything? No. No? That's it. That's it? How can, how can we stay in touch with you? What's your Instagram? Um, at shortkelly27. See? And you telling me people don't know? <laughs> people don't know? They don't know I'm four ten they and a half. They can see it. Your Instagram says it. Everyone knows hey. you're short. Fun fact, I'm like an inch and a half of weighing uh, legally. I think what's the proper word for a midget? Now you're calling yourself a midget? No, I'm just saying that if, nah. I was a, <laughs> if I was an inch and a half shorter, I could be able to get the handicap sticker. Oh, yeah, because you're, you're disabled, right? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy because that's the actual height. Yeah, it's, there's it's an four actual nine. height. Four nine, yeah. All right. Well, that's it. Thank you guys for listening to the boss, Kelly. Kelly, uh... What was Fun. my other nickname that you didn't mention? Oh, man, you he got just a lot. Starbucks, repo. every time she's late, she's Starbucks. <laughs> Starbucks. That's her. She acts like she's getting Starbucks, but she's running late. The line was big. All right, y'all. Thank you guys for listening. Have a good one. We out.